Our scripture reading today is from Acts, and we're looking at a few sections, chapter 9, 11, and 15 together. I invite you to read along with me. When he, Paul, came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he really was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Some time later, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them. But Paul did not think it was wise to take him because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in their work. They had such a sharp disagreement that they parted company. And Barnabas took Mark and sailed for Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers to the grace of the Lord. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. What are your first memories of friendship? We had a dog, Lady. She is a big boxer who thought that she was a Yorkie. And she was my very first best friend. She listened. I believe she cried with me. We played together. And she was the best Barbie and Ken therapist in the world. Later on, I met Imke. We were eight years old, trying to make sense of life in primary school, discovering what we were good at, She knew all my fears and insecurities. And the two of us were sure we were going to change the world one day. As life passed, there were many others that came and went. But each friend and also the friends friends in my life right now has and had a formative influence on my life. Who were or are those formative friends for you? Friendship is a powerful force that works in you. And in our faith, we believe it is the one relationship that stands forever. We were created for relationship, out of relationship. I mean, if you believe in the reincarnation or if you believe that there's no eternity, then at the end of your life, that means all relationships end as well. But God is an everlasting God and God is relationship. And he made us out of relationship for relationship. We were made for friendship with him and with each other. And that is an eternal friendship. And friendship is a precious relationship because it's the one relationship that you can choose to have. It's not formed or forced by blood or through obligation. There's nothing that forces this relationship. You have a free choice. And it is a relationship that brings out something in you that no one else can. I so love the words of C.S. Lewis. He says that, that I'm going to paraphrase and make it my own, but if you lose a friend, it's not that you only miss that person. It is what that person called out of you that you miss when they are no longer there. 
your friends, each friend brings something very unique out of your, out of your being and your life, their presence. Now in today's scripture, we look at a very specific friend who was a formative force in Paul's life and the life of others, Barnabas. And we first read of Barnabas and come to know him in Acts 4. His name was Joseph, but the apostles of the early church in Jerusalem, the first church, gave him the nickname Barnabas, which is an Aramaic name, meaning son of encouragement. Now, you know, you don't give someone a nickname if there isn't a characteristic that comes out very strongly. So he had this characteristic of an, he was an encourager. And so they give him the nickname Barnabas. And if you read through Acts, you see that he was a very interesting person. He had the ability to move into a situation and bring about friendship, community, hope, and encouragement. He lives Jesus' invitation where, where Jesus says, where two or more gather in my name, where two or more friends form, come together, where Jesus is the glue, there he is in a very unique way and great things happen. This is so true in Barnabas' life. And today, three moments in his life that are invitations to us to grow in friendship. And the first invitation and reality is that friends accept. Read with me again in chapter 9. When he came to Jerusalem, this is Paul now. He tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him not believing that he really was a disciple, but Barnabas, Barnabas took him and brought him to the, the apostles. And he told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. And look at this. Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. So Paul had this dramatic encounter with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. Remember, he was Saul at first. He was the one that persecuted Christians. And so he, after this encounter, he wants to come to Jerusalem because he wants to join the disciples there. But they are so afraid of him. They were suspicious of him. They didn't know what his motives were. Did he want to get into their group and continue with some of the scaly business he was, he was doing and part of? They didn't really believe that he was a disciple. But look at Barnabas. Look at Barnabas in the midst of this discouraging situation of suspicion and mistrust, distrust. Barnabas takes Paul and brings him to the apostles. And look what he's doing here. He tells them how he has seen Saul um, speaking about God. He, he, on his journey, God spoke to him. The Lord spoke to him and he fearlessly preached in Damascus in the name of Jesus. And Barnabas accepts, accepts Paul. And he enters this situation and he's a friend by believing the best and accepting. This is Barnabas. He allows the disciples to share their hearts. He listens. He allows Paul to share his heart. And he's a bridge between them. Nothing shocks him. Nothing disappoints him. He listens and he's accepting. And there's a shift that happens between the disciples and, and, and Paul. And he starts ministering alongside them because Barnabas is a friend. We need Barnabases today. We need friends who walk this path with us. And usually you share a life mission with this type of person. And when you meet these people, there's a chemistry that just, it may, they, they make you come together and feel, we just click. We just click with each other. And it's nice to be with this person. You feel like, I've come home. Here I can be myself. 
This is a place where, where I'm not afraid to say how I feel, where I'm safe to think aloud and I don't have to be on my guard and count my words because I'm not going to shock this person. I'm not going to impress them either because they know me. And they know when I'm trying to be someone who I'm not. And they are there to tell me the truth, speak into my life. Our world is poor in friendships. Many of us don't have a home or a place where we can take off our masks with other people and just be ourselves. And we long for that place where we can share our lives deeply, laugh together, cry together, and be accepted. The second invitation, friends and courage. So news of the church in Antioch had reached the church in Jerusalem. And we read about this in chapter 11. And, and the church in Jerusalem decides to send Barnabas to Antioch. And I find it very interesting that they send Barnabas. They don't send anyone else. They don't send Paul. Paul would have preached to them. They send Barnabas because they know Barnabas is an encourager. And this new church needs an encourager. And look at what he does. News of this reached the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad. And he encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man. He was full of the Holy Spirit and faith. And a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Barnabas encouraged them. And he encouraged them to remain faithful to the Lord with all their heart. Here, we, he, he, Barnabas has a ministry of encouragement. And I don't know about you, but the words that struck me most when I read this was a great number of people were brought to the Lord by Barnabas because of his ministry of encouragement, not his preaching, not his uh, laying out the word, his encouragement. And to encourage is to express appreciation. And can I ask you, and I ask myself, do you ever express appreciation to your friends? Because it's powerful. It can change lives. Do you ever tell your partner, I really appreciate you and tell them why? I appreciate you for cooking for us every night. I appreciate you providing for us. I know it's hard sometimes and that you may not like your job, but you make sure we can live. And I just want to say, I appreciate you and what you do for us. Do you appreciate your friends? I appreciate you always reaching out to hear how, I, how I'm doing and how things are going. I'm not always that good with my phone, but thank you. Thank you that you don't give up and that I can know that you're always there for me. I appreciate you. I really do. Are we encouraging each other? What would it be like for you to go to someone who's a friend to you today and express your appreciation for them in a very specific way? Because this is the ministry of encouragement. We have so many ministries. They are all good. But here, here is a very, very practical way to follow Jesus and to change lives because the atmosphere changes when you encourage someone. Did you see that in the text? A great number of people were brought to the Lord by Barnabas because of his ministry of encouragement. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Who do you need to call? Who do you need to talk to today and appreciate today? The last moment I want us to look at is a very painful moment in Barnabas' life. But we get a glimpse of the heart of friendship that he has and that friends give second chances. Sometime later, Paul said to Barnabas, let us go back and visit the believers in all the towns where we preach the word of the Lord. And let's go see how they are doing. 
And Barnabas wanted to take John, also called Mark, with them. But Paul didn't think it was wise because Mark had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not continued with them in the work. That's such a sharp disagreement, Paul and Barnabas, that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark and they sailed for Cyprus and Paul chose Silas and left, commended by the believers to the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia and there he strengthened the churches. Now the Greek word used here, which is translated as a sharp disagreement, is paroxysmos. And it's a very, very strong word. It can be translated as a violent anger between the two. Disagreement. And you can feel the hurt and tension when you see what's going on here. But we get to know the heart of friendship of Barnabas here again. Mark had failed Paul and Barnabas a few months earlier. He had let them down. But Barnabas wants to give Mark another chance. Somehow Barnabas sees that Mark deserves another chance. Somehow Barnabas can see potential in Mark. Somehow Barnabas might understand why Mark failed. And so he says, Mark, I want you to come with me. And he gives him another chance. And today we have Mark's gospel. I wonder, I wonder if we would have had that gospel today if Barnabas had not risked another chance on Mark. And I'm so deeply grateful to friends and people who have given, who gave me another chance people who gave me an opportunity. It, it's, it's a wonderful gift. Who can you give an opportunity to? Maybe there's someone who has failed you in your friendship, but you can see potential. You may know why he or she failed and you feel, you know what, I'm going to risk on you again. I'm going to give you another chance. I need to end. We need Barnabases. And as we worked on and pre prepared for this sermon series, I realized how I'm someone who constantly thinks, I need to go and seek out and create these relationships in my life. But the more I talk to the Lord and the more I reflect, the more I realize I already have these relationships in my life. I have friends that God has given me. They are a gift of grace from God. And I want to be a friend to them. I want to cherish them and I want to grow in friendship. And it's not always easy. There are difficult, painful challenges. There are par paroxysmos moments that come. But this is the one relationship. It's one of the relationships that can last forever. It does last forever. It's the relationship that can change the atmosphere. This is the relationship that can bring a great number of people to the Lord. Friendship. Who is your Barnabas? And who can you be a Barnabas to today? Lord, we thank you for your word. That it is a light unto our past. We thank you for your work in people's lives so that we can learn and see and follow and find ways of, of growing. Thank you for your friendship, that you long to have friendship with us and that your friendship accepts us, believes in us, gives us second, third chances, encourages us. And help us to grow in this, Lord. Help us to become Barnabases in this world so that the atmosphere can change, so that we can see the power of ministry, of friendship and encouragement, and that we can witness, that we can witness how, how you work in and through us and this relationship in our lives. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us again today. If you need pastoral support or care, please contact us on pastoral at mosaic.com. And if you do have a, a prayer request, please send that to us. We have a team that would love to pray alongside you, with you, and trust God uh, for 
whatever you need right now in your life. Receive the blessing. The love of God our Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the friendship, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remain with us all. Amen.